Just to give you a, a little bit of sense who uh, we are, MongoDB is a next generation database company. We basically uh, provide uh, the means for developers to build large scale modern applications, uh, leveraging the most modern techniques, the most modern development languages. And we have um, over 2,000 customers across almost every industry, and we've been around for about nine years. So that'll be the last of my uh, commercial. But what I'm here to really talk about is to give you a little bit of sense of how we think about uh, uh, IoT and, frankly, AI. Uh, now, I, I was told that the audience is mainly a business-level audience. So I'm not going to go into a lot of technical detail. Um, obviously, you know, we can ask questions at the end. So um, I do want to spend a little bit of time on AI. Um, obviously, AI has been in, in the, you know, been something that has been in our imagination for the last 40, 50 years. Um, in fact, from all the way from 2001, the Space Odyssey, to even like Ex Machina, uh, there's been a lot of you know, um, movies about um, our fascination with AI. Unfortunately, there's been a very negative twist around AI because ultimately all those movies are about the machines turning on humans and ultimately killing them. So I'm, I, offer, I would like to offer a more optimistic outlook about AI, but it's clear that um, um, this is something that's really caught our imagination. The other thing that was clear was that this is all viewed as science fiction. Well, the reality is that science fiction is no more because AI is here today. And the seminal event for AI was um, about in 2012 when people realized that something had changed was when there was a, a research um, effort. Um, there's a competition called ImageNet where basically um, you know, researchers were asked, people were asked to see if they can classify pictures more quickly and more accurately than humans. And this is a pretty complex problem because pictures, when you decompose them, are essentially ones and zeros. So how can a computer really discern what is exactly in that picture? And what happened was there was a set of researchers in, uh, out of Toronto, led by a gentleman named Jeff Hinton, who came up with an approach that basically could classify those pictures and ultimately identify that, you know, all those, out of all those pictures, here's a nice group of, of kittens, for example. And what it really showed is that their approach was not only two times faster in terms of the algorithms they built, but also twice as accurate as humans in terms of identifying what was in those pictures. And what it really told people was we had hit a magical moment because now we could actually train machines to do intelligent things. We could actually program intelligence. And that is really all about AI. And that's essentially um, been the catalyst over um, you know, the last uh, few years about AI. In fact, today, I cannot pick up a magazine, a newspaper, the, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, without there being some article about the manifestation of AI and how it's going to transform our societies. And I also, you also see a lot of thought leaders basically talking about the fact that AI is the next big opportunity. And so um, there's a lot of hype around AI. And we also see that we're seeing a lot of first generation uh, products, all the way from Watson, which is obviously focused on the enterprise, to things like uh, Alexa, Siri, and even most recently, Google announced a new chatbot called Allo. And so if there's, if there's something, if there's an industry that's kind of at the height of its peak, it's, it's uh, this, this uh, category. And I was a VC, as uh, uh, Rahul mentioned. And uh, um, one thing VCs are very good at is being lemmings. They're very good at chasing the next new idea, whether it's been mobile, social, big data, e-commerce, SaaS, et cetera. And guess what? There's been a 10x increase in investments in, from the private equity industry in AI over the, over the last five years. So that's pretty profound in terms of the amount of investment and money going into this category. And that doesn't include the investment being made by large companies, people like Facebook and Google uh, and others who are really making big, big investments because they fundamentally believe that this, this space is going to transform their, that this, this category is going to transform their industry. So as I mentioned, we are truly, truly at the, almost at the peak of the hype cycle. This is the Gartner hype cycle. And so what does this mean? It means that we're inevitably going to be disappointed. I think all of us have been through the first you know, internet to wave. We've all seen the investments like pets.com and Webvan and others. 
And there's going to be lots of investments. Some of them are going to be kind of have luke, uh, lukewarm results. Some of them are going to be totally disappointing. And some of them are going to look back and scratch our heads and, heads and say, what exactly were we thinking? But much like Pets.com or, or Webman, those were investments that actually are working well today. Not necessarily those companies, but um, the food uh, commerce industry, the pet commerce industry is actually white hot. And the online grocery industry uh, is actually uh, taking hold. In fact, there was a company in New York called Fresh Direct that just raised a lot of capital based on the success. So this is an issue of timing. And so the question is not if, but when AI will really have a um, huge impact on our industry. So I believe one of the biggest opportunities for AI is actually in IoT. In fact, I don't think you can actually do IoT without AI to make it really, really useful to the point that was mentioned earlier in terms of being able to sense and, and um, gather intelligence, uh, be able to make intelligent decisions and, and react to what's going on because you need some fundamental components. So let's talk about those components. There's really three things that drive AI. One is processing power. You know, um, not to get too technical, but one of the things that's a breakthrough for AI was the, the explosion of processing power, especially what's called GPUs, or graphical processor units, because they could paralyze processing. And that's, that was very important for gaming. It's also very important for AI, because you need to do a lot of linear algebra for AI. So that was something uh, that really has helped accelerate uh, the AI uh, efforts, because you know, 10, 15 years ago, we didn't have access to the processing power. Just to give you a sense, NVIDIA's last chip allows you to do about 24 trillion operations. So basically, one chip can do about the workload of about over 150 MacBook Pros. Second is the algorithms, <clears throat> and I'll get into that. And the third is, is the data. So we talked about processing. Um, let's talk about the algorithms. So Jeff Hinton, who's viewed as the father of, um, of um, um, uh, I'm having a brain cramp, who, who's basically viewed the father of, uh, of machine learning and, and learning systems, he, they basically, what they did was they, they used a, a whole host of techniques to basically um, uh, come up with the approach to classify uh, photographs. And those techniques um, started out in initially with expert systems. And expert systems were really systems where you basically hard code rules into uh, try and codify rules that you, you go, get from some domain expert. The problem with that approach was that there's just too many rules and too many variables, so you can never deal with corner cases. And so that, that basically um, um, manifests itself in deep learning. And deep learning has a bunch of, of algorithms associated with it, and, a, and, and a one big part of that is around machine learning and training machines to basically uh, behave in a particular way. And the only way to do that is to feed them lots of data. And the big breakthrough also is that we have more data available today than we ever had before. And one of the interesting things is that when you see companies like Google and Facebook and others open source their, their kind of machine learning algorithms, they're very happy to do that, but they will not give you their data. Like Amazon's not going to give you their buying behavior data, Google's not going to give you their search data, and Facebook is definitely not going to give you their social data. So data in some ways even triumphs um, the algorithms that, that uh, may, may be out there. And so <clears throat> what this really suggests is that for us to have a real impact on AI, or to see the next advance of AI, one of the big opportunities for data is actually IoT. Because IoT is going to give us a lot of real world data about who we are, what we do, where we, how we sleep, what's going on in our homes, our commutes to work, et cetera, that will give us many, many opportunities to use that data in very, very interesting ways. So how, how do we kind of take AI to the next level? So on processing, you're going to see some advances in, ch in chips because you're going to start seeing people build very, very specialized chipsets. Now, obviously, it's very expensive to build ASICs and build, you know, ultimately build a chip. It takes about $50 million to come out with a new chip. So you've got to be very, very sure that if I'm going to build a very specialized chipset for a very specialized algorithm, that I can be very comfortable that that al algorithm is, is the right one. And so there's going to be some chicken and egg issues with like <clears throat> the uh, development of algorithms and chips. In, in, the, in the area of deep learning, what you will see is that we right now are, are, what, are doing what's called supervised learning. So what it means is basically we're basically training, the, uh, giving data, annotating that data, and we're using a bunch of techniques, uh, supervised techniques, progressive, um, and a bunch of other approaches 
um, decision trees and so forth around using, uh, using these algorithms. But the next big wave is to go from training machines to understand the data for the, the algorithms to essentially train themselves or the machines to essentially train themselves. And that is a big area of research going on and that will unleash the, the next big wave of, of kind of a, a work in AI. The challenge though is that we actually know very little about how we learn today. It's actually you know, something that's very, very diff difficult to understand how we abstract, how we reason, how we infer, uh, how we you know, um, <clears throat> essentially get, um, um, you know, make a bunch of decisions. And so um, you know, we try and model that in neural networks, but that is actually a very, very complex task. And to get machines to teach themselves to become better and better is the holy grail, but it is going to take some time. And the other area, as I mentioned, is IoT, because now we have a whole bunch of real world data. So what are some of the kind of use cases that we see out there? One, there's a gentleman named George Holtz. You know, everyone talks about the Tesla car, but a gentleman named George Holtz built a $1,000 uh, adapter. Basically, he was a gamer, built a $1,000 add-on adapter for any car to essentially make any car self-learning. And basically, he's using IoT data to uh, essentially help the, 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 his, his, uh, his approach and his machines learn very, very quickly. So that was kind of interesting and kind of makes, makes the whole point about buying an autonomous car very, very affordable for a lot of people. The second area that we see a big opportunity is in sports. Uh, we actually have a customer, I can't mention the name, but a, a major sports league who's, who's embedding chips and please don't infer the, the sport I'm referring to as to who my customer is, uh, but who's embedding in chips into their equipment to essentially track um, um, you know, activity and be able to see abnormal ab abnormalities. And so, for example, one profound issue in, in, in football is, is concussions. And, you know, so they, we can measure, like, the hits, not just professional players take, but children get, and be able to measure what is their motor activity afterwards and is there any degradation of performance to quickly highlight um, what's happening uh, with that, pers that person if they've had a severe traumatic industry, industry, injury. And the th one other area, this is probably my favorite, is there's actually researchers now in thinking, um, embedding IoT sensors in the toilet bowl. And the reason this becomes really important is like, you know, something like pancreatic cancer, you know, by the time you, you discover that you or a friend of yours or a family member has pancreatic cancer, it's almost too late because then you're just trying to prolong the quality of life. But imagine if you can have an IoT sensor leverage, leveraging uh, AI to basically track you know, anomaly, anomalous behavior of your stool samples every day and quickly identify markers you know, that may potentially predict something bad happening in the future. That will have a profound implication in the quality of life and the quality of healthcare for individuals. And so one of the big, next big waves I see is the combination of leveraging IoT and AI to really do some predictive analytics and be able to have some amazing use cases, both in healthcare and in, in other areas. So I will just close, and then we can take some questions, with the fact that um, I see big, big opportunities um, in this space, and I think the companies that are going to do, be very, very successful are those companies who marry AI, who not just focus on AI, not just focus on IoT, but can marry those two disciplines to build some amazing um, uh, use cases and ultimately amazing businesses. We're fortunate to work with lots of companies. Unfortunately, most of those companies were under super secret NDAs, as you can imagine, because this is uh, pretty important work. Uh, who are doing some um, pretty pretty cool stuff. One example I'll, I'll tell you is a company called X.AI. It's actually uh, not a typical IoT use case, but it basically is an AI application built on top of MongoDB to basically virtualize your personal assistant because most people find that when they schedule meetings, they spend about five hours a week trying to do the ping pong email or phone call scheduling, and they basically will automate that process leveraging your calendar information, your phone call, your phone information, your phone directory, and basically automate that process to schedule a meeting without you even having to be involved. That's just one small example for, uh, that we see in our industry.